evening, buona notte, and welcome, benders, to Round the Bend. I'm Doc Crop, your lovable editor, and I'm just going through some of the sticks of mail I've received from you, my loyal viewers. <clears throat> Here we go, what's this one? Ah, yeah. uh, dear Doc, please would you rate me and tell me how to improve my terrible memory? Well, I would, but you've forgotten to include your address. <clears throat> now, what's this? Oh, an electric bill. Shocking. <clears throat> Vincent, my loyal gag rater, get over here and eat this. <clears throat> and the next one. Oh, a gas bill. A water bill. A tax bill. A duck's bill. Oh, I'm sick of all these bills. Who decides these things anyway? I mean, who is this bill person? And how can I get him to leave me alone? He work for the government. They send the bills out all of the time. So that means if I ran the government, I wouldn't have to pay these bills, would I? That's a coincidence. There's an election next week. Why not stand for Parliament, Doc? Well, that's an idea. Yes, stand for Parliament. Ah, yes, but I need a name for my party. Um, hand me your pizza while I think of a moment, you <laughs> shitty male son. Mm, mm, mm. Now, what ward epitomizes the fame qualities of this stout crocodile you see before you? Uh, uh, How about a mm, greedy? Mm. Ah, I like it. The greedy party it is. Have a crumb, chum. The further adventures of the Oddbod family. Rich Uncle Leon is coming to visit today. Not the one who smells a lot. Yuck! I'd better peg my nose. No! Uncle Ian's the one with the face like a baboon's bottom! No! Uncle Ian's the one with a spotty face and greasy hair. Get and... off me! Ah, ah. What's that? It's me, you great blubbery buffoon. Your uncle, Invisible Ian. Oh, where are you? Oh, look out for your nose, child. You're poking me in the eye. Sorry we insulted you, Uncle. Here, shake hands. Oh, let go of my nose, you horrid child. Oh, I've had enough of you lot. Bounce out of my way, bozo. Go on. Oh, dear. We'll probably never see rich Uncle Ian again. I never liked the grumpy old toe rag anyway. Whoa! I heard that. I'm still here, turnip brain. Mother, you said that without moving your lips. Vote for Doc! Vote for Doc! Doc for Parliament! Vote for Doc! Doc for Downing Street! We want Doc! We want Doc! We want Doc! Louder! Vote louder! For Doc. Louder! Vote for Doc. How do you expect the voters to know what an honest, upstanding, modest and humble individual I are if you don't shout about it, you festering fleabags? Hey, uh, ah, hello, and welcome back. The programme will be slightly different tonight because I'm running for election and I want your vote. And we now pause for a partly political broadcast on behalf of the Greedy Party. <clears throat> Good evening. You may well be asking yourself, if I vote for Doc Croc, what is in it for me? Good. That's exactly the attitude we in the Greedy Party are trying to encourage. Well, remember, a vote for the Greedy Party is a vote for jelly and ice cream on the National Elf Service. A vote for the Greedy Party is a vote for free parking for skateboards. A vote for the Greedy Party is a vote for real food in school dinners. And a vote for the Greedy Party is a vote for a free chocky picky from me, your caring, sharing candidate. Yes, a promise to create a kind of Britain, a more gentle and generous and compassionate headed. Lou, you veiled veilinist, shut that disgusting din now and try to make an important speech. <coughs> oh, where was that? Oh, yes. A uh, kind, compassionate, thoughtful, caring, lovely. <laughs> I'm so sincere. If, if I are elected, a promise on my word of honour, no tax on pocket money, strawberry bubble gum on prescription, and a massive pay raise for my wonderful and talented gag writer, Vaudeville Vince Vermit. What? what? Ho, oh, oh, ho. Very funny, Vincent. Uh, excuse me a moment, viewers. I'm just going to make that putrid prankster eat his words. Oh, we are! Kenny McTickle and his magic kilt. Oh, hello, Grandad. How are you feeling? Oh, hello, Kenny. Pretty miserable. It's so boring in here. Oh, jings. Dinner not worry, Grandad. <laughs> Have some cake. Oh, scrumptious. <laughs> Aye, and I've got some lemonade and party hats for everybody. Oh, Clifford's jings and help my bob. All we need now is some music. Ha, da -da! 
My word, it's Jason Donovan. Oh, Jings, I thought you said music. G'day, cobbers. Now, let's see everyone dancing. <laughs> What's going on? You're all supposed to be resting. Uh-oh, time I was off. Where's my pogo stick? Here we go. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, never you mind, laddie. Cheer up. I'll sing you a wee song and juggle with my plums. Oh, John, the is it? Oh, no, no, knock it on the head, Granddad. Oh, oh Germans, Jings, and help, my boy. Buddler dub, buddler dub, buddler dub. Tonight in a John Potato News Round special, we focus on the elections and we take a look at the latest political phenomenon, Doc Croc's greedy party. Who is this powerful new leader? Who does he represent? And who cares? Well, John, not many people, according to the latest opinion poll. He's got no chance. In our survey of the voters, 1% of people said they'd never vote for a crocodile, 13% said they'd never heard of him, and 8 out of 10 cat owners said their cats couldn't tell margarine from butter. His policies are violently opposed by the Trades Onion Congress. <laughs> The Greens are against him. <laughs> President Bush has expressed his disquiet. I ain't sure about this limey croc. Today, the charismatic leader of the Greedy Party has been on the campaign trail, meeting the man in the street. What are you doing in the street, you stupid men? Hiding from you! Go away! And to round off the day, he won thunderous applause when he addressed a meeting of his followers. Thank you, thank you, my loyal patriots. Four more years! Four more years! Oh, I love you all! Right. I will fight for you in Parliament! Yes, and to sum up, this crocodile is a conniving, cynical, corrupt, two-faced, slimy, lying hypocrite. In fact, everything you need in a politician. He has also got a reputation for being totally ruthless with his political opponents and anybody who dares to criticise him. Ah! We men and the masters of the Looniverse! In the mystic land of Hernia, we man and his companions prepare for their greatest challenge. The charge will be led by mighty Armoro with his short sub steel. They won't catch me with my pants down. Our main force will be led by Wily Octopoido in his coat of arms. Always ready to lend a hand. Men, women, things. This will be our greatest challenge. Charge! But nearby, the despicable skeleton face also prepares for battle. <laughs> Gagalo here will act as lookout, and the main strike force will be led by Granny Gruesome with her handbag of hate. <laughs> it is time to battle, my weirdies! Battle! Battle! <laughs> Good morning, customers. I now declare these January sales open and I'm like, yeah! Where's my minions? Oh, oh, Bagsy the Winnie the Bull Bench, Brett! Slippers with a fluffy bunny. Yeah. Next week, we man and skeleton face visit a health food shop, and there's a big blowout in the bean department. campaign is a disaster. This graph shows that Doc is about as popular as a body burp in a small lift. Yeah. When he goes out to meet the voters, he's about as welcome as a hedgehog in a nudist camp. Oh. See, the people that hate him are like a Jeremy Beadle in a hiss attack. Oh, quick, let's put the TV on. It's time for Doc's interview. Maybe he'll say something that will boost his popularity. Oh, yeah, and pigs might fly. Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> yeah, right on my bumps. Yeah. 
Hello, and welcome to Root of the Matter, the program where reading political figures of the day are interviewed by a vegetable. I'm Brian Cauliflower, and my guest tonight is Doc Kwok, parliamentary candidate for the new Greedy Party. Mr. Uh, Crocodile, would I be right in saying that you've slipped in the opinion polls from nowhere to nothing? No, no, I'm pleased. Sorry, no, let me finish. Let me just, let me just say you'd be right, but you wouldn't be safe. Oh, uh, well, how do you intend to reverse this trend? How can you gain enough popularity to win a single vote, never mind the election? I'm glad you asked me that question, and I'd like to answer it in two ways. Thirdly, I've decided as a public-spirited citizen <laughs> that it is my duty to rid the country of a plague of pests that have been making life misery for everyone. So, immediately I'm elected, and despite the severe risks to my stomach laning, I propose to eat Roland Rat, Philip Schofield, the entire cast of Neighbours, Esther Ranson, Cliff Richards, John Sessions, Terry Wogan, Julian Clary, the people who do those yucky coffee adverts, Rowan Atkinson, Ruby Wax, Les Dennis, Michael Barrymore, Jim Davison, Cilla Black, Lloyd Grossman, Postman Pat, Chris Tarrant, continuity announcers, followed by Simon Bates for tea, Gazza, Mike Smith, Bruno Brooks, Sooty, all those idiots who do the stupid dancing on top of the pops, and Timmy Mallet. In short, all those people that drive everybody mad. Hmm. Maybe I should start with you. I, I don't think that's really necessary. Oh, oh, come over here. Oh, Salt, oh, please, make up. Oh, oh, hooray! Oh, Doc, he really knows the way to people's hearts. Yeah, through their stomachs. Yeah. Hooray! The time she has turned to a turtle. We are on the way to the middle of the road to victory. And we shall not be moved. Yeah, unless we get run over. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Doc Crock's Nursery Spot proudly presents Fairy Tales of the Unexpected. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived in a cottage in the wood. One day, they came home to find that their door was open. Why? Somebody's been eating my porridge, said Mummy Bear. And somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Daddy Bear. And somebody's hiding under my bed, said Baby Bear. Why, hey, man, it's me, didn't you know? Jody Locks, the Cary Newcastle United fan and bear hunter. Oh, 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 oh. And some time later, Mummy Bear said... Somebody's nailing my head to the wall. And somebody's tap dancing on my back, said Daddy Bear. And Geordie Locks said... Why, hey, you noisy bears, get stuffed. I already am, said Baby Bear. Incredibly Cheap Productions, in association with We Could Use This Set for Something Else, PLC present False Teeth from Beyond the Stars, meet Adam Banana. The totally evil False Teeth from Beyond the Stars have vowed to conquer the Earth, take all humans into slavery, and make everyone have silly Jason Donovan haircuts. Adam Banana is prepared to defend humanity to his last breath, asking only in return a place to live, forgiveness for his past crimes, and a million pounds in used fibers. Yes, the scene is set. Which is more than this jelly is. Burn niche, what have you done to my lunch? Get him, my cheeky choppers. Nibble that fruit. Gnaw him to a pulp. Yes, grab that banana by the skin. Swing him round till he gives in. Roll him over on his oh, head. No, no, Keep no, no, on no, biting no, till no, he's dead. Go on, don't be fed. Stop it, no. It's not because I'm going to wet myself. Go on. Have some banana. Pull yourself together. Don't let them make a meal of your... Think of your friends, your family, your collection of new kids on the block boxer shorts. Yeah, think of the fate of humanity. Think of the money you'll lose if you don't survive to make a sequel to this crummy movie. Yeah, OK, you're right. It goes... Don't despair, men. Uh, teeth, we are versed in the alien art of Nishi Nashi. Get him! Attack! <laughs> it's the battle of the year. It's the fight of the decade. It's top of the pups. Oh, sorry. Wrong program. It's violent. It's catastrophic. It's destroying. It's, <laughs> it's destroying my voice doing all this yelling. <laughs> Bernice, get me some throat pastels. Here we are at the town hall for the results of tonight's vital election. All the votes are in. The candidates are assembled. Oh, and here's the mayor to read the results. <laughs> <laughs> as the duly appointed returning officer for this area, I declare the results to be as follows. Telephone claims not required. Editor's decision is final. Winner to be decided by three-fourths, two submissions or a knockout. Allow 28 days for delivery. 
And the votes cast are... Mr. Fred Bear. Nudist party? 800 votes. <laughs> a good showing for Mr. Bear. He's had a lot of exposure in this election. Ms. Rose Tree. Garden party? 87 votes. <laughs> oh, bad luck, Petal. This is a candidate who hasn't been afraid to tackle the thorny issues in this election. Mr. S. Claus. Christmas party? Three votes. <laughs> oh, poor show. Looks like the sack for him. Mr. Dr. Crocodile. Reedy party? 10,179 votes. Well, it looks like Doc Croc. Just a minute. Screaming Lord Screw Loose. Monster Robot Looney Party. 10,180 votes. What? What? Beaten? Beaten? They are bucket of boots? They one vote? Hey, hey, demand a recount. Hey, demand to see the Queen. Hey, demand a nice cup of tea and a bucket of raw liver. <laughs> Beaten. Oh, somebody will pay for this. <laughs> what is a wonder sheep? One day, Wooly the Wonder Sheep heard a cry for help. Help! The daring sheep, brave as a lamb, sped toward the despairing voice. Yeah, I'm an excellent sheep. I will save him. Ah, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Ah. Holy the wonder sheep. Thank goodness. Bad Bart and his bandit band have left me to die. Quick, stop the fuse from burning. <coughs> hey, where you going, you coward? <coughs> but Wooly the wonder sheep was no coward. He had a plan. I got a plan. <coughs> oh, <coughs> God, what the devil do you do that for? I'm a vicar. Are you sure you're in the right place? Where to now, Wooly? Another exciting adventure to save someone's life? No, to save my own. Come here, you little creep. I'm going to make kebabs. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> oh, uh, where is me? Oh. Lost, lost. I've lost all that power, all that fame. Those state visits, Rolls Royces, slap up feeds. They could have been mine. Mine, I tell you. The backhanders. Oh, <laughs> I was nearly there. Dining with the upper crust, noshing with the novelty. But I lost it all. So near yet so far. For the sake of one boot. <laughs> I'm inconsolable. <laughs> one measly boot. <laughs> Never mind, Doc. It's it's always the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> very good, the dog is very catchy. <laughs> Maybe you could win. A <laughs> <laughs> binky bonky boo. Yeah, and nice one, dog. Doo. What's it called? It's called Total Misery and Dejection, Vincent. <laughs> Not very catchy title. Ah, oh, poor Ducky Wocky. <laughs> Fancy only losing by one vote, yes. eh? <laughs> if only we'd remember to vote, you'd be in the Houses of Parliament now. <laughs> it's so very kind of you, Vincent. <laughs> Hey, no, you're only trying to cheer me up, but don't try. No, 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 it's true. Look, 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 here are our voting cards. So funny, really. <laughs> you know, somehow we just didn't get round to it. We was watching Neighbours, and Jemima put the kettle Vince, on. You know it is when you put up. your feet up, everything just slips your mind. The next thing we knew, it was time for Coronation Street. Oh, you've to change the subject, Pepper. And by the time we remembered about the election, the polling booths were closed. Silly old us, eh? <laughs> uh, uh, did, did, I, did, I, did I say something wrong? Uh, uh, Oh, I'll vote for you next time, Doc. Yeah, Honest. there'll be another election in four years, really. Let's see if we live a that long. I'll give you four <laughs> years on your backside. Let's, Come here. No, let's, Come here. let's decide this by the ballot box. <laughs> <laughs>